five miles northwest of Frankenwood. Way back when. Age 14. Dad said, hey, Don, if you want to earn yourself a little money. My sister was working at the time, was working at Zender's Hotel. So I went and applied for a job, and I got a job as a bus boy over there, age 14 years old. That was 1949. Now you know how old I am if you got a little math in your head. I'm 75. All right, I got a job across the street. When I got there, at the time there was already Eddie and Leonard Zender running the show. Because their dad was Bill Zender, old Bill and Emma, six kids, 1928 we gotta go back to. The place was called the Exchange Hotel across the street. Grandpa Bill always had a vision of being a restauranter. He had a 40 acre farm south of town. The name Zender must have meant something to write to the community then because he was a county commissioner. He had the idea, wanted to have own a restaurant. He sold his 40 acre farm, $4,000 for his 40 acre farm at the time, $4,000. 40 acre farm, there's $100 an acre, not very much at the time. Now land is selling for $6,000 an acre. But he sold his 40 acre farm. He borrowed another $4,000 from his son-in-law, Otto Trinkline, who I knew well. When I came back in service in 1956, I come out of service. That's who I went to see for a job. Out of Trinkline, he was a then president of the bank. I wanted to work in the bank. That didn't work out. I'll get to that later. But anyway, he borrowed another $4,000 from his son-in-law, Otto Trinkline. Now he had $8,000 and he bought the Exchange Hotel. Renamed it Zender's Hotel. His wife, Emma, he put to work in the six kids. He sat out front, shook hands with the men, hugged the ladies, kissed the babies. That's the way he did business. While the kids and Ma were doing the work out in the back. That was Bill Zender. You had to know him. I knew him well. That's just the type of fellow he was. Well, Ma and Pa Zender ran it then until they got up in years. They retired. And then the two brothers, when I came on the scene in 1949, the two brothers, Leonard and Eddie, was running that side. This side was called the Fisher Hotel. So the name of Elmer Fisher ran this side. There was a McNiven Hotel which sits across the street and the Kern Hotel, four hotels. None of them had rooms for rent. They were merely eating establishments. They had built up their business was the Flint, that the auto people from Flint to Saginaw coming back and forth. That's what their business was. Word of mouth, spread, a good meal. In the neighborhood of 85 cents at the time, you could eat a full course of chicken dinner until the belly pushed the table away from your, from your arm length so you couldn't reach the food anymore. That's how you could eat. Their reputation grew. Well, then Eddie and Leonard ran that side as I said. Tiny was William Zender Jr. Tiny was not the young, the, he was not the youngest, but he was the smallest. He had a 40-acre farm <coughs> south of town and raised hogs. He collected the garbage from these four hotels to feed the hogs. Those hogs never made the table in the hotel because sausage hogs are fat. They they make good sausage, but they don't make good chops or loins or, or roasts. He always told Mr. Fisher when he collected the garbage, if you ever want to sell Elmer, let me know. Thanksgiving in 1950, the biggest day of the year in town for these hotels. Everybody would take mom and dad to go out to eat. Mom didn't cook. The food was ready. That morning a snowstorm hit and the whole town was blockaded. It said Thanksgiving of 1950. That afternoon, Mr. Fisher called Mr. Tiny Zender and said, Tiny, do you still want to buy a hotel? He had had it up to here because of that incident. So that afternoon, Tiny and his wife, Dorothy, then signed the papers for buying the Fisher Hotel. But now it was a, what we today would call an LLC corporation. There was a good producer, so the money in the pot, you form a corporation. Then you can borrow more money and make a go of it. Little by little then, Hey, across the street, Eddie bought the rest of the siblings out. On this side, Tiny bought the siblings out. And it was about 19, well, it must have been the middle 60s. By the middle 60s, then, Eddie owned that side and Tiny owned this side. A far cry from what it is today. Back in those days, each, seat, each seated about 225 to 250 people. Today, Zenders can seat 1,500 people at once, and this side can seat 1,500 people at once. So you see how the, the thing grew. The area you're sitting in was floodplain area. Every spring of the year, that Cass River, which is behind it, the embankment you see dead ahead of you, would come out, and this place would be flooded. Not once, but three, four, five times, depending on how much snow the winter had brought, how much rain we got, how fast it melted. The, the lower levels, which we call the basement, today they call them lower levels. Be sure and go down there when you go in later on. Go down there and look. The lower levels.
levels are about three times the size of this bus in both sides. They didn't use them because of this water coming out. I went in this service 1953. The army didn't know I could speak this franking with German. They sent me to Germany. All the goofy things for them to do. Had they known that, I'm sure they'd have been in Korea because Korea was going on at the time. But that's the way the army did things. If you spoke Korean, they sent you to Germany. If you spoke German, they sent you to Korea. My mom wrote me letters where the Corps of Engineers put this berm through in back here. It starts up there with the big silos. You'll see the big silos. That's about where the berm starts. It runs down here about a three quarter mile. There's a double horseshoe. And it keeps the, the water and the cast in its banks. Since that time, middle of nine, the middle 50s now, 1950s, since that time, we've never seen water where you're sitting in here again. September of 1986, it came within, if you look ahead, you see the cement abutment in the middle of that earth and berm. It came within three inches of coming across that wall. That's how the rain, the rain started and we the, we thought no one was going to come down the Cass River in this ark. I mean, that's how bad it was, it rained. The farmer said, I don't know how many of your, your uh, grand blank, I don't know how bad, ag how good agriculture's done it, but the farmers had navy beans that got right that time of year. They were swimming in water, it was a total loss. It was a, but had that come out, this would have been ruin, ruined down here. I mean, the, the, the downtown area would have been ruined. So it has, when you see Cedar Rapids on television, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, or the flooding in Tennessee, that's what you experience two, three, four times since every spring of the year here in Frankenmuth. That's why the Bavarian Inn is up dock height. When they built that, they put it up because of the river. It's four feet off the ground, the main floor. On the other side, Zenders, the main dining room at Zenders is ground level. It wasn't uncommon at all on Friday night to have a foot to 18 inches of water in the main dining room floor of Zenders, and by Sunday we'd be feeding people in there. Because as fast as that river come out, it would go back in again. And us guys would get in there and with with uh, machines, with steel wool rolls, clean up the floor and we'd be back in business. Throughout this thing, then for the next hour, you're gonna hear Zenders, Runners, Zenders, Runners. The, the, those were the two driving forces, the families that caused tourism to develop and, and grow in Franken. All right.